Well, this video is going to show a number of different things on how I make. Um, one is the um, the mast bases on the spar deck. Go at the base of the mast at the spar deck. Now, I'm sure that many of you have their own ways to do these. I don't know if they're similar to mine, but I'm going to show you how I do mine. And um, basically, you start out with a circular template like this <clears throat> and your mast. Find the hole that it fits easiest into like this, in which case it seems to be the half inch on this one. Now, uh, I simply go ahead <coughs> and um, draw that circle there on stock that by scale it's about nine inches deep. In this case, this is an eighth of an inch. Well, I have the center piece now. I'll we'll find a hole on here up above, about it, a little bit larger. <clears throat> well, maybe not as thick as it is deep. In this case, it's 11 sixteenths. And I'm gonna center that center hole. Go ahead and make this one and see how that looks. Looks like it might be a little bit small right here, and uh, and it is. So um, I'm going to move up a little bit to about this size and put this on here. Now that size is a little bit better. Now the best way to do this is to start a hole in the center of your piece like this. Uh, this is basswood so it's kind of brittle and it breaks easy. Now you can do this out of boxwood if you want to but I usually have trouble with it if I just use box basswood like this. You know, once you get this hole made, you may want to make it large enough so that eventually you can put, say, something like this or use a round file on smaller versions. And technically, I will just take my knife and I will sit there and enlarge this hole here until I can get this into it. And then I will then carve out this hole with the file or with this until you get to your outside piece here like this, all right? Now once that hole is, is made, you flip it over onto the other side and you take some thin set CA and you soak the wood back here, good. And let it dry, let it soak in. And that's gonna help prevent breakage when you get to the point where you will basically take your saw and you will cut your circle on the outside. Now, I did a lot, this a lot of ways before I discovered that doing this hole in the center first and then cutting the outside off and adding that CA to the back to strengthen it really made it look quite easy. And I don't think I have to go through each step showing you what it looks like at each given point because it's actually pretty uh, pretty straightforward. You're gonna end up something like this. When this piece is cut out on the outside and you have it all filed and sanded smooth, so you're, you have your two circles and you have basically the regular circle, you just take and cut this smooth, file this off, round it like that, sand it down, paint it, and you're done. Well, that's pretty much it for this particular uh, section. A couple other little things I'm going to show you how I make are on this plan for this particular ship. The chains look like this. Okay, this is from the end. This section here is looking end on on a hoop. I'll show that in a separate video. Here we have down here, which are technically the dog bones, because in the early versions they were shaped like a dog bone. As they progressed in uh, time, over time, 
that little roundish shape that you see, like say on the HMS Victory, for instance, which is pretty classic, disappears. And there's almost no roundness at all. So I basically use just a straight shot piece of product here. And I found that recently that making them out of styrene is much easier than making them out of brass. And we will start with a stock that looks a lot like the size that you need. And in this one, it's this particular size right here. And technically, you just take and you round off the end. This is a piece of sandpaper like this. You just round off your end like this, all right? It's pretty simple, actually. When you've got it rounded off the end to where you're happy with it, you'll take, say, oh, a um, ruler, such as this one, and going by your plans, and in this case, it's a little more, it's a 32nd larger than 3 eighths of an inch. So I'll go to that point on here, get to this point right here, like this, and just make that little snip. And once I have that done, it's just a matter of taking this and going like this until you have your end rounded off to the point where you're happy with it. At that point, you need to make your holes, which are, again, it's not very difficult to do. You will take the, basically your drill bit to the size of the pins you're going to use and simply, you know, be obvious. So you make your drill, drill your hole like that. You do lose enough of these till you have what you what you need. Now, for my purposes, these will be painted black, and I will not paint them until I have them on the ship. It just seems a little bit simpler that way. The paint doesn't get scratched as I'm handling the pieces. Now, the second part of the chains that I wanted to show you are on this little section right here. Looks like almost like, if you will, a teardrop, right? Goes around in the corner here like this. The way I do mine is I take a piece of boxwood. Now it's boxwood because boxwood is hard. And I take copper because copper solders easier than steel. And now you can see I've had I've just taken a, a gauge of wire that is appropriate to the thickness of the steel that would have been used on the ship. And I just make these little wrappings around here like this. And I put these on an anvil or something hard, and I take a small hammer, and I pound these flat. Now, if you look on the end of this, and it's not obvious here, but it's rounded here, and it's tapered to the sides, and back towards this end, you can see it's much thinner than it is here. I just didn't need this end, so I didn't do all the way out here. I just did it on the section where I needed, I needed to use it right here. And by pounding these down, I'm going to get the basic shape for these little things right here. At that point, really all you'll have to do is sit and make a snip on each one of these little sections here. Now it's a little harder to get into this because I got loops a little bit close together. So I'll um, move those apart as I go around. But you know, I have at least one done here. Now you can see there that they don't have quite the shape that I want. And that's to be expected because of the thickness of the, the metal. But you make your snips like this and you take, once you take your pliers and you pry them together 
and you squeeze this little end together here, just like this. See, now you have your piece. That may seem a little broad according to the plan, and that's fine because, again, I'm going to take this and I'm going to squeeze this end together like this, all right? And now I have basically my little shape right here. You can see here, like this. Right. Now this end down here, just see here, right here. I will silver solder this. It's not silver solder. I call it silver solder because it's silver bearing. And I will put a, 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 a dab on the end of this right here and file it smooth on both sides and then I will drill a little hole right there to the center of that. Now once that's done and the drill is hole holes drilled and I have this smooth dot rounded off on the end here I just take my pliers and I just make a little dip see and it will be angled like this because when it's on the side of the ship it will be like this. It'll be angled like this, so to speak, okay? And you'll see that in later portions of the video, all of those steps as they go along. Now, here are some of the middle chain plates. The teardrop-shaped ones are have been filed somewhat. The ends still need to be rounded off and a hole drilled into them. I'll show you that later. And uh, these are some that have been done, but just soldered, the two ends soldered. They haven't been filed smooth yet. Um, we'll show that on a video in just a little bit.